Most hardcore baseball fans know the likes of Cy Young, Nolan Ryan, Bob Gibson, Greg Maddox, and Roy Holiday, but not many know the great Addie Joss. Adrian Addie Joss was born on April 12, 1880 in Woodland, Wisconsin to his parents Jacob and Teresa Joss. As Joss grew, he formed into a tall, skinny frame while also having noticeably long arms. These physical characteristics would eventually garner him the nicknames the Human Slat and the Human Hairpin. At around the age of 18 or 19, Joss bounced around from team to team in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, until he settled with one in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, where he played second base and then pitcher. But Toledo Mudhens noticed his success on the mound, giving him his first professional contract. After two years of dominating hitters in the Interstate League, Josh earned a spot on the Cleveland Broncos, later at Knapp's roster, out of spring training. At the young age of 22, Josh started his major league career by pitching one of the greatest debuts in baseball history. On April 26, 1902, the human slot took a no-hitter into a sixth inning against the St. Louis Browns, finishing with a one-hit complete game shutout. Josh went 17-13 and 13 with 28 complete games, a 2.77 ERA, and a league leading five shutouts during his rookie campaign. He followed it up by winning 18 starts and lowered his ERA to 2.19 in 1903. Three years later, Josh had an ERA under 2 at 1.72 and went 21 and 6. Following the 1906 season, Josh took an offseason job with the Toledo Newsbeat as a journalist of a Sunday sports column. The recognizable voice in the column helped give Josh increased fan support during his holdout for a better salary prior to the 1907 season. Josh settled for a contract worth $4,000. The human hairpin reached his peak on October 2nd, 1908, when he faced off against the Chicago White Sox right-hander, Big Ed Walsh at League Park in Cleveland. Josh and Walsh traded zeros all afternoon and arguably the greatest pitcher's duel of all time. During the third frame, a pass ball by Chicago catcher Ose Sugarnos allowed Knapp stop hitter Joe Birmingham to score the only run of the game. That's all Joss needed to outmuster Walsh and tell us the second perfect game in baseball history, doing so on only 74 pitches. Just sparked a new interest in engineering during the 1908-09 offseason, designing an electronic scoreboard that would give fans the ability to know the balls and strikes. He successfully marketed the scoreboard the Cleveland Management, who installed the Joss Indicator on a new, bigger scoreboard at League Park, which also posted the lineups of both teams on either side of the balls and strikes. Fatigue and a torn ligament in Joss's elbow ended his seasons in 1909 and 1910 respectively, but expected to pitch again in May 1911 following some rest. Unfortunately, before an April 3rd exhibition game in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Joss passed out in the field while chatting with his friend, Chattanooga shortstop Rudy Hulusit. During the early hours of the morning of April 14th, two days following his 31st birthday, Joss died abruptly of tubercular meningitis. Two months later, a group of all-stars from throughout the American League, such as Ty Cobb and Cy Young, faced the Cleveland Naps in an exhibition game to help Joss's widow, Lillian, and their two kids. More than 15,000 tickets were purchased for the game, which witnessed the All-Stars win 5-3 in the unofficial All-Star game. More importantly, the contest raised $12,914 for Joss's family. In 1978, 67 years after Joss's unexpected death, the Veterans Committee of the Baseball Hall of Fame eluded the minimum 10-season blade rule and elected him into the Hall of Fame. I'll end it with this quote by the Toledo Blade, who best encapsulates the person Addie Joss was. With Addie Joss, based on what the profession, as sure as that of any other, for it gave recreation to the masses, brought them out of the factories and the counting room into the open air and the sunlight, and made them forget the pretty annoyances in life. Taking his vocation seriously, he was in return taken seriously by the people, who recognized in him a man of more than usual intelligence, and one who would have adorned any profession in which he had elected to engage.